Right, well, welcome, everybody. Uh, one of the things I thought was uh, interesting about John's talk at the, uh, the beginning was how unique all of the areas of, uh, of British uh, limestone are. So what I want to talk about today is a particularly unique one for, for me uh, and for all of the diggers of the Yorkshire Dales. So this is not in any way to say that it's the best area, but I just want to talk about why it's a unique area. So one of the things that we find uh, unique about the Yorkshire Dales uh, as far as exploration is concerned, is this amazing block of limestone in its geography, in its geographical position. So one of the things in the center of the country, to the side of the, uh, the Lake District, south of the North Pennines, it's an amazing block, sat on top of the Askrig block. Uh, we've got rivers pouring out of it in all directions. It's cut off at the top uh, by the Stainmore Gap and the, uh, the Eden Valley, sort of Shap and the Howgills uh, to the west, the Vale of York to the east, and the Craven Lowlands to the south. And what it is, of course, is the source of amazing rivers. And, and this, again, for our, our understanding of caves, is crucially important. You know, the rivers that run through it and out of it. The source of the Eden at the north. And then as you swing round, the Swale, the Ewer, the Air, the Nid, the Wharf, swinging round to the, to the Ribble, the Loon, and then all the smaller rivers that come into that. And not only do we have the source of these amazing rivers that flow to the east and flow, and to the south, and flow to the west, we've also got these amazing mountains that, that create the source of all of these, and all of the valleys as well. We've got the, the gritstone, the sandstone on top, and the Yordales, and this amazing uh, limestone bed up to two, uh, 200 metres uh, underneath it. So it's a vast area, cut in all directions, wildly complex and of course continually changing. So yesterday we began uh, with Milton. One of the things I want to start off today with, with Ovid, really, the, the classical poet, and the idea of metamorphosis. And one of the wonderful things I feel about the caving that we're in, and again we talked about this yesterday, is about time. And one of the things Ian mentioned that we're, we've delayed the next ice age, but uh, technically we are in an interglacial, and so many of our caves have been formed through glaciation and the effects of glaciation. So we're in the middle of it. The caves are still forming. Sometimes we feel this is what the cave is, but it isn't. It's in a process, and we're just in the middle of a process. We're just popping in before the process sp speeds up when we're not around. So this idea of metamorphosis, this idea of change, is something that I'd like to, to see uh, today. Given the time, I can't really talk about exploration all through the Yorkshire Dales. So I'll just be looking at the three counties and Gaping Gill in particular, but, but thinking about wider issues as well as we, as we go on. So to start off with the three counties, I just wanted to start with this shot uh, of uh, Tim and Joe in the Moho, just in a way to talk about, again, coming back to John's earlier point, about the, the hours that are put in the person hours, the cave digger hours. Uh, the mohole here, this ended up as an isolated. It's not part of the three counties. We wanted it to be. We hoped we would drop down onto the, the sump coming from Keld Head to try and find a way of connecting it with Rift Pot. So down we went. I've been in before. The roof had collapsed at the entrance, smashed my helmet and my cap lamp, damaged my shoulders. I'd been back in again, got caught in a flood on the second pitch. I came out and thought, it's going nowhere, I don't need to go back. And then many, many, many years later, we decided it was a good place to dig, and I went back over 40 times to dig this hole, which originally en en ended up going further down, but not where we wanted it. it. It was blocked beyond all control. But what was wonderful about it, and this is one of the great joys and amazing points of digging, is that partway down the mohole, we came across a misfit sort of invasive stream coming in at the side. We followed that through into another cave, into another shaft, completely blocked at the surface, no sign of it on the surface at all, no shake hole. But we entered this shaft that had been partly worn away by this stream that we followed in. So this idea of chance find, serendipity, and again, this constant metamorphosis. So where we are with the three counties. Amazingly, with the three counties, it starts in Cumbria, comes through Lancashire, pops into Yorkshire. And at the furthest uh, entrance to it, uh, uh, top sink, is the start of it. But there are so many complexities to the three counties that 
many of us have been digging to try and get A. Gill connected uh, to Bull Potter, which is to tie A. Gill in. But we've also been digging at the far end of A. Gill in the new, ser new Year series to try and extend it into Barbendale. And the, the Lord of Barbendale, Lord Barbendale himself, Hugh St. Lawrence has done all sorts of wonderful things in connecting caves there with buckets on the head, dog holes, crystal, and so on. So, potentially, the three counties could shift into Barbendale, but the Dent Fault is trying to stop us doing that. So we can start off with the, the, the complexities and the wonder of the East Gill system, which is an amazing system. This has been found, not over the last 50 years, obviously beyond that, but he's still being extended. And what is amazing about the, uh, the, uh, the East Gill system is its catchment area. It's a fantastic catchment area, but talking about Barbendale, talking about the far end of Ierby Fell, the catchment area is one fantastic valley, but he also has watersheds, and the watershed that drops over into Barbendale and the one that drops into Kingsdale. But many of these watersheds uh, have been formed through glaciation and had no direct effect on the earlier parts of the caves below. So what we've got, again, is this idea of change and metamorphosis. Glaciations, valleys being cut down, passage being truncated. And this is one of the, the amazing aspects of this, that so many of the entrances have now been revealed, but there are other entrances, of course, which are completely sealed underneath the boulder clay. So much of what we do is to try and find ways through into that boulder clay and into passages like this. These are amazing photos of Mark Berkey's, and I think this shot, it's a puzzle there, but if you've been into East Gill, if you've been into County Pot, you'll know poetic justice. And of course, this is an amazing piece of limestone here, a tight, highly polished chimney with very few footholds that you squirm up, and then the main passageway there. This is a great photograph. And of course, parts like this, the complexities of East Gill are such that for many people, they were walking down here, they didn't see the way up here. So there are some fantastically hidden passages in well-worn passages. And here's what that particular chimney leads into and, and further parts of the East Gill system. And here, Wretched Rabbit, one can see the digging that's been done here. This isn't naturally deposited cobbles, uh, but these uh, have been built up as a passage was dug down into spiral staircase below. So again, talking about the effort uh, and the struggle of people to, to deal with this, it's quite, quite some. So the catchment area, one of the things that we, we could argue here is that much of the water that's gathered in the, the Great Hill Gregareth area and sinks into the East Gill system all of the passages, however wild and, and crazy these passages are, that they all resurge at Lechbeck Head, or sometimes a little bit further back before that, at, at Witch's Cave, depending on the, the levels of water. So underground, an amazing collection of passages on different levels, level after level after level. Again, a while ago we were trying to describe the Easegill system and why it was 90 kilometers to someone who was looking at the two-dimensional uh, passageway. And they were looking at the survey and said, I don't see how you can get 90 kilometers here. The, the, uh, uh, the part of the map they were looking at had the, the measurements of two kilometers and said, there's no 90 kilometers there, there's about five kilometers. But what, of course, the two-dimensional uh, map hides is all of the complexity below. These all potentially have been uh, accessed by divers. This one was initially accessed by divers, but then digging in through to the top, we found ways in so that dry cavers uh, could find the way in. And again, we, made, we saw this last night, box head pot, uh, part of a wider system found from the bottom, climbed up from the bottom, but originally, and then ev ev uh, eventually dug in from the top. And not too... Again, and again, when it comes to exploration, uh, I was lucky enough to be involved in the three counties connection that tied in all of the three counties uh, systems together by tying Lost John's Cave and Caverns into Knots too. And this is something, again, that can become obsessive. Back to John's point about time uh, and effort here. Uh, this is where I started digging uh, in around about 2008, 2009 with 
the Misty Mountain Mud Miners, where I first met and, and began. And when we began, we had no idea what we were doing. We thought, yes, we'll join in with a bit of digging. My son, myself, my friend and his son. We all thought it would be a good laugh. Two years later, twice a week for two years, we dug and dug and dug. And we probably dug out maybe 60, 70 meters. Doesn't seem a lot. But if you do do the connection today, all of that was dug out. That was solid. And it's all, all been removed. So this was an epic undertaking that took years. Other passages have taken four years. The entrance into Knots 2 took at least four years, possibly longer than that. So determination, <laughs> when we're looking at these, these aren't things that happen overnight. But look what you find when you get into them. So I have befell, as we move out uh, of the... Uh, the, the catchment area of Eastgill, we start going over the watershed, uh, you pass over Ayerby Fell. And here again, massive connections. The connection here from Ayerby Fell into Riftpot uh, was amazing, was one of the most, again, an astonishing connection of two caves. Yorkshire and Lancashire connected there. Once you're in Ayerby, of course, Ayerby uh, 1, now leads into, via divers, but there is now a dry way through, into Ierby 2. If you look on the maps, and you look on the surveys, the trunk route, the old, this Duke Street here, uh, this passage seems to carry on, but it just stops. And what it stops here, Mick has just been digging in it, there's just a big, thick, walloping, great mud and boulder choke just beyond here. And this is where this Duke Street 2 finishes. But the line carries straight on. So great, one of the great mythical hopes is the lost passage of uh, Duke Street 3, or IAB 3, can it be found? So just where Jeff is here and Mick and uh, Diane there, there's a passage here called Escalator Rift. And that leads into much higher passages that we're hoping will drop down over the other side. And here's Jeff in one of our, our projects, one of our digs to try and do that. So this is in what's called uh, Frink, out of Frink Chamber and pushing into Far Frink. But it's a, it's a wonderful old phreatic tube. And as with many of these, it's been silted up uh, and we need to dig it out. Tim here at the front with a chisel on the end of his drill, the boulders had calcited together. So it was a boulder choke, but it was a calcited boulder choke. So in order to get it out, crowbars couldn't do it. You've just got to sort of chisel between and then get the crowbar in. And we broke through into passages beyond, which then seized up again. But since then, we've decided to hop over. Can we get to the other side? And I mentioned this yesterday. We're in Pinocchio Pot on, on Gregalith. And there's two entrances uh, into here. This pillar holds the roof up. Uh, all the joints are along the top. Tim and JJ there uh, looking happy. But when you do look at this, it is an incredibly fractured chamber. And quite interesting. And we're not far off the Craven Fault. So structurally, it's a, it's a bit awkward. But it is going down. We're now 50 meters down. Uh, during the week, we reached the Frink level, the Frink horizon. We got into the passage of Frink beyond the, the original choke. Uh, but it's still full of gravel and we're still digging out. So uh, this Wednesday, maybe we'll get closer. So these things are, are still ongoing. Further down, if you come across, uh, Andy's always mentioned, keep, try and get the big shots. I had to put this one in. This is a great shot from Jane uh, of Tim, uh, connecting uh, Low Duke Cave with Rift Pot. Very close to the connection passage that takes it into Ierby. So all of these are, are, are progressing further on. But one of our problems uh, with all of this is that we're still trying to get through to Kingsdale. So this is one of our efforts in Rift Pot to go down into Crystal Inlet. Again, the way we dig with the scaffolding bars holding back the shoring, uh, Joe and Rowan there. Underneath the main passage, large mud floors that you go through if you're going into a large pot. Underneath all of that mud, we tunneled underneath it and we found a shaft. Just above Diane's head here, uh, there's a large boulder keeping all the mud and the gravel back. And at the bottom, we found the sump just in there. Jason Mallinson dived to the sump, hopefully to connect it through to marble steps, but it, it didn't. It choked up 
silted up and we, you couldn't get through. So these efforts to keep finding the way through uh, continue. Great push a couple of years ago was to, to extend large pot into the Eastern Front. These photographs uh, by Beardy uh, show this amazing passage, fantastic passage, which ends in a blockage, and possible beyond the blockage, truncation by the glaciated Kingsdale Valley. So this, the first photograph I showed was top sink, where everything began, and here I just want to show you that the end of the system at Eastern Front as it swings all the way around. So our, our next point is to try and connect it into Kingsdale. John Cordingley is doing some amazing, absolutely breathtaking dives uh, from Keld Head and up the Marble Steps branch. He's not far off, but the descriptions of what he's having to do in underwater with his oxygen equipment and his bottles, reversing incredibly tight squeezes, uh, just beggars belief, really. So bold work from John. All the best for him for, for tying up with there. Here's a photo uh, John took of uh, diving at Keld Head. The history of diving at Keld Head, of course, uh, goes back a long, long way. Uh, and the two people who are digging with us now in Pinocchio Pot, Jeff Yeadon and uh, Jeff Crosley, uh, here they are after their epic King Pot to uh, Keld Head dive, 1991. Uh, and they've been also responsible, uh, Jeff had been responsible for the Kingsdale Master Cave to Keld Head. So at the moment, our, our ways of tying in the 90 kilometres of uh, cave that exist in the three counties with the 27 kilometres that exist in Kingsdale, it's in the realm of the diver. We've tried to do it in a dry way, but it's very difficult. So loads to do there. That, that's still working on. Gaping Gill, an amazing uh, system. Even though there are... There are bigger systems and deeper shafts now, possibly because of the winch meet with the, the Craven Pothole Club and the Bradford Pothole Club. Gaping Gill is probably still one of the most famous of all large cave entrances and drops in the country. But an amazing system of passages. Over 20 kilometers long, over 20 entrances. It's a massive system. But completely and totally unlike the, uh, uh, the, the East Gill Three Counties system, the catchment area of Gaping Gill and Ingleborough is incredibly different. Instead of the valleys, it's surrounded by valleys. So, you know, it's got the, uh, the Ribble uh, to one side. It's got tributaries to the Loon down to the side. It's got Chapley Dale coming at the side. And it's an isolated peak. So as far as the rainfall and the thing, it's everything that comes off the top radiates out. So instead of one resurgence that we see in East Gill, you've got a whole string of resurgences going all the way around this fantastic, isolated mountain of Ingleborough. But that said, still an amazing chamber. Here, a fantastic photograph uh, of Marx. Uh, one of the main ways in, uh, Bar Pot. But again, this, this is, as all of the, the, uh, the caves on uh, Ingleborough, is an incredibly vertical system. There is horizontal development, a lot of horizontal development, uh, in Gaping Gill, but it's not to the extent of the three counties. So this is the amazing variety of possible caves. All the way around Ingleborough are fantastic, deep, vertical caves. And even though we've got them in, in, on Leckfell and so on, it's not like Ingleborough. Ingleborough is special for it, its, its type of caving. But that said, there's still low, tight, uh, um, and muddy caves. Great photo here of, uh, from, from Dave in Hensler's Master Cave. So there are some fantastic drainage areas in there. But again, what we've got to see is time uh, and people pushing further and further on. So the future, you know, where does this all take us? And one of the things that Jane's great uh, shot of... Uh, Bullpot over here is Tim, I think Bullpot and Bullpot of the Witches, uh, Bullpot Farm, the Red Roses uh, hut is just here. But this fantastic Leckbeck head here, all of East Gill through here, Lost Johns and Leckfell, Ivy Fell Cavern, a massive area. And to imagine a cave system under there of 90 kilometres uh, is, is stunning. And there's so much more. But so much of this is buried under glacial fill. The digs that we've done there, many of the digs could take us up to five to six metres before we get through the fill to the epicast and possibly the, the entrance to the cave beneath. Some of it's much shallower, but on the whole we're talking five to six metres of glacial uh, boulder clay 
to get through to the, to the limestone. The hope of tying all of this into Kingsdale. This is a massive area. And again, Kingsdale, there's still so much more to find. There is an enormous number of entrances, but again, so much of it is buried under glacial uh, boulder clay. But our, our hopes to connect Kingsdale down at the bottom there with uh, East Gill round the side over the watershed all really lies with cave divers at the moment. Epic cave diving, I would say. All of this takes us around into Chapel Dale. Some of the connections that we could find that would take us from Kingsdale at the moment into Chapel Dale are possibly truncated. And so many of the connections from the three counties have been long worn away by glaciers. And so they can't be found. But even though part of them may have been removed, the extension of it into Ingleborough could still be there. So there are many theories, and who knows whether they're true, who knows whether they can be realised, but these are for the future. Can we find the old trunk route, possibly a large bit missing, can we find its continuation under Newby Moss? I was talking to Jeff Eden before I came out here, and his ideas of vast trunk routes going underneath Kingsdale, under Chapeleydale, and going under through to the Ribble Valley. And he was saying the Ribble Valley is the bigger uh, valley. It's the deeper valleys. Chapel Dale, Kingsdale are relatively shallow compared to that. But this is dreaming. This is our imagination running wild. Uh, but it would be fascinating to see what we could do with that. And then Ingleborough. Uh, what more for Ingleborough? Enormous number of things. So many pots have been found and still are being found on the benches that run all the way around. So here's the... Uh, the gritstone top, this is on Scales Moor, by the way, when this photograph was taken. But all of this area, all the, the limestone area, what's been found so far is amazing. So much more could be found. So Ingleborough is still all to play for. Here's Happy, uh, Happy Hannah. Penny Ghent in the background. Ingleborough over here. This is taken from Wernside. So one of the things I wanted to show here, the three, the three peaks and the three blocks of limestone but so much I haven't talked about Penny Ghent but so much to do in the Penny Ghent area the Bradford uh, are working doing epic stuff there just over the way behind Hannah we've got Fountains Fell and we're moving over to Wharfdale and in Wharfdale epic work with cave divers again in Blackheld and, uh, and the areas here but also some amazing bold pushing in Mossdale Caverns that's still enormous. What's going to happen with, uh, with Mosdale? Langcliffe, can these be connected? Can they be connected again by divers? Uh, can cavers get through this? But I also know from friends in the White Rose and in the Craven Pothole Clubs, lots of digging going on. Steve, Steve Woods, uh, a friend of mine, sent me a list of what the White Rose are currently digging in the Wharfdale area. It's massive. Many of them are tiny and small, but it's enormous. There's still more to do. And just to finish with a, a shot of Jason disappearing beneath the, the waves there, what lies beyond? Who knows? And we've got the idea of the deep airs unmeasured wilderness, a fantastic reference from Shelley's Prometheus Unbound. What lies beyond? I mean, now, we use the term caverns measureless to man, but I love this one here, the deep airs unmeasured wilderness. It's a wild place to, uh, to discover. There's still more to find. And it's the imagination is one thing. And as we were saying yesterday, when you go into the unknown, one of the things you must take with you, we always take with us, is pff, our thoughts, our myths, our stories, what we've heard in the pub, and so on and so forth. It all goes down uh, with us. But it's not just that. And I just want to finish in the final point, is that we also, having listened to the, uh, our scientists today, but also we're going to bear in mind our guidebook writers and our storytellers, is just to think about where we get our ideas from for exploration. Uh, this has been a fantastic year for publications in, for the Yorkshire Dales, but over the last couple of years, it, it's been amazing. So this has come out, Dave uh, and John's book uh, on this one, uh, Sam and Beardy's book, The Northern Caves, an amazing achievement, absolutely superb. The work that's gone into both of these has been something else. But John... Cave and Cast Science, the BCRA's uh, magazine, we, we use this. But these two books for Yorkshire cavers are incredible. And this one, volume two, particularly for explorers, uh, uh, Tony and uh, Dave's uh, edited uh, editions here. The wealth of detail in these and the possibilities that are opened up are fantastic. 
So all cavers, you go into exploration. These are two of your important manuals. On top of that, even if you're not a cave diver, the Northern Sump Index is an amazing collection of where caves are, where they go, where the waters go. Again, fantastic surveying and work from cave divers. And then a final word for, a, for our descent. Chris and Judith deserve an enormous amount of praise for what they do putting together uh, this magazine, which, as it says at the top, magazine of underground exploration. This fires you up, and this is where you find ideas about where things could go and where they'll, they'll end up, potentially. So a big thanks to these people. Thanks again to my photographers uh, who've lent me uh, photographs for, t uh, for today's talk. And uh, that was a little brief view of Yorkshire. Thank you very much. Cheers.